So, Daredevil Born Again has been cancelled. Well, sort of. Recently it was announced that Daredevil is getting a mostly complete creative reboot. Marvel fired their head writers, their remaining directors, and anybody else steering the story to where it was going. The Hollywood Reporter broke this article, which goes into many other interesting things that basically reveal why the Marvel Disney Plus stuff has been pretty terrible, what Born Again would have looked like, and more. Additionally, we have some reliable leakers who gave more insight into what the story would have looked like and what it still might look like. Some good, some really bad, but what do I think of it? Well, let's get into it. So first of all, I don't particularly like that Daredevil Born Again has been cancelled. It never should have been cancelled, it's just more reckless behavior by both Marvel and Disney. I don't like that the creatives now lost their jobs simply because the studio couldn't make up their minds and that they won't be able to fulfill their vision. And you know, I don't like having to wait longer to see my boy on screen. However, it does really feel like it's a means to an end, and hopefully this experimental way of making TV and maybe even Marvel movies will come to an end. This is why, at the end of the day, I think the show getting cancelled at this stage is a very good thing. Because let's face it, with where Marvel is at right now and rushing productions, creating mediocre scripts, and seeing how all of Phase 4 went, Daredevil was probably going to be another show with shining moments but is mostly just mediocre which is the last thing I want from a show that I so dearly loved. So what happened though? Basically during the writers and actor strike, uh, actor strike is still going on by the way, Kevin Feige and other executives decided to watch and review the footage that was shot for Born Again, which was a little less than half of the planned 18 episodes. And after reviewing the footage, they're like, yep, nope, this is just not working. I can't even imagine how bad it must have been, because it costs an unbelievable amount of money to just scrap everything they've done. They've already went through the process of hiring all the people, paying them, casting, filming all these episodes, like so much time went into them. It'd be much cheaper for them to just finish what they started, so if it was even a little bit presentable, it must have really not been good for them to just scrap the whole thing. According to The Hollywood Reporter, Matt Murdock actually wasn't even going to suit up in his costume until episode for. Which honestly isn't such a bad thing, I mean him suiting up as Daredevil isn't what I love about the show for the main part. I mean if you want to be technical, we don't see Charlie Cox in the Daredevil suit for like two thirds of the series pretty much, but I mean by suiting up if they mean he doesn't do any crime fighting at all then yikes that's pretty bad. The show is called Daredevil after all, we should see some sort of crime fighting going on way before episode 4. And creatively I'm just kinda sick of it, he already just dealt with not suiting up as Daredevil and leaving that life behind and now he's gonna do it again? Even after we see him suit up in She-Hulk and presumably in Echo? Like I don't know, I think that would have felt really uninspired and redundant. The show's tone and vibe were mostly going to resemble a legal procedural, kind of like suits or something, which sounds like a weird idea for what we got before, but it's not necessarily a bad idea if executed well. But from the looks of it, it was probably just kind of boring. It was most likely just a show about a regular lawyer doing basic legal courtroom work and solving a case each week, and just relating it more to superheroes. I don't mind them taking a more episodic approach to things, but I'd want it to resemble more of the glory days of the Flash and Arrow if it were to do that. There is something really lost in TV these days about having a nice self-contained story. It's really refreshing being able to watch a story being told from beginning, middle, and end instead of an episode just being a small piece of a larger puzzle. But yeah, apparently the story and episodes that were made so far were just really disappointing. Which might sound mean but is somewhat unsurprising. What is surprising though is like how did they not realize that it would be like this until after they worked so long on this show? Why did the executives go along with this type of tone, structure, and narrative? Surely whatever they shot couldn't have been that far off from what they read from the script, right? Well, I feel like normally that would be shocking, but I guess with the state of Marvel right now, it's pretty understandable. Kevin Feige, the guy who mainly runs the MCU, seems hardly present or involved in the projects, so he probably just didn't fully know how it would turn out until he was actually able to see it. And my guess is that Feige probably would have just cancelled half of the other Disney Plus shows like how we did with Daredevil had something like the strikes happened then so he'd be able to properly review the footage and start over. So another reason why the strikes are a really good 
good thing. Another big thing in the article that was mentioned was a lot about the writing and how the structure of it will change in the future. So had writers Chris Ord and Matt Corman were quietly let go at the end of September 2023. These writers were mainly known for creating a crime procedural show known as Covert Affairs and the Deck the Halls. Seriously, no offense to the writers, but how on earth did anyone think it was a good idea to give them head writing credits for Daredevil? Well, the article kind of gives some insight because it does get some insider knowledge stating that Marvel is more of a Marvel-driven medium than a writers-driven medium. I mean, I think we all kind of knew that already, but it's nice for that to just be cleared up. So if you're a really experienced writer who has something truly interesting to say, you probably wouldn't get much creative freedom to dictate how the show will go, as the executives at Marvel will pretty much just decide for you. And vice versa, Marvel probably doesn't even want to work with many writers who want a lot of creative control because it would just be harder to work with them and they would most likely just have to pay them more. Which is pretty bad, but thankfully it seems like they have realized the errors of their ways since Marvel TV is now trying to structure itself like an actual TV show now. That sounds kinda insane that they had to come to that realization in the first place, but still. It's good. Like most probably realized, watching the Disney Plus shows felt more like watching broken up movies split across six episodes rather than feeling like an actual TV show. Probably could explain the length of the episodes too, of why we'd get a random 30 minute filler episode, a 40 minute episode, and a random 50 minute episode in the series. The episodes don't actually feel like an episode of TV, they're just a small segment of a movie that's been slightly restructured to be part of a show which clearly didn't work. TV shows have these people called showrunners. For Daredevil season 1 it was Stephen Knight, for season 2 it was Marco Ramirez and Doug Petrie, and for season 3 it was Eric Olsen. For any of the Disney Plus shows there was… uh… nobody. That title did not exist. Instead of having TV showrunners, they simply had executives and directors running it like how movies work. Proper TV shows simply do need a showrunner because that's where most of the creativity comes into play. People like Vince Gilligan from Breaking Bad, Peter Gold from Better Call Saul are so renowned because they have clear artistic voices being led by actual showrunners. And it's fantastic that Marvel is finally going to lean into that. What they are also going to do in the future is to take time in making multiple seasons of TV so that audiences can become more attached to the characters, develop relationships with them, instead of it simply ending. So that also means we can probably say goodbye to the 6 episode limited series format. But honestly 6 episodes was not such a bad thing, nor did I have a problem with the limited series. It was honestly just how it was formatted and produced and written, more so than the structure of a 6 episode limited series because that also does kind of sound entertaining. I think the worst case of the production and format of the show just going wrong is most recently with Secret Invasion. That show was just very much not good. The article goes into pretty great detail about that and basically it just confirms how rushed the production was, how they got rid of the head writer after a year, and how much of a mess it became. One really interesting thing from the article was Marvel's fix it and post attitude. What this means is that Marvel will probably rush production more because if anything goes wrong they'll simply just reshoot it later since they have the funds for it. It kind of works for their movies, but for shows with multiple episodes it just kind of doesn't work. What they're seemingly going to do in the future is lock on the scripts way before filming, stick to their vision, and make sure everyone is on the same page before starting production. Doing reshoots afterward is completely fine, but basically not caring about the scripts and how the production is going presently because you can simply fix it later is a bad attitude and it really shows. Anyway, that was a long recap of the article, but how does this affect Daredevil? Well, Daredevil Born Again, um, well, again, again, will basically feel like an actual TV show the next time it resumes production, presumably. They're going to hire better talent, get a showrunner, and lock in all the scripts for the episodes before they start shooting. So hopefully it'll just be a lot more organized and will most likely lead to a higher quality show, which is all we Daredevil fans truly want in the end. I mean, really, thank goodness whatever was shot was scrapped. Can you imagine waiting six years after the show got cancelled to simply getting a mediocre version of it? Especially 18 whole episodes of it, all of which would simply air week to week. Like, that would be just painful. Now let's get into a bit more detail of what the show is going to look like, or not look like. So the show is probably not going to be TVMA as it was stated that the show's violence and intensity was very much not present. Which is like, you know, one of the defining traits that made the Netflix show so great. So basically we were getting no Daredevil, no intensity or violence, 
basic procedural stakes instead of complex drama, and half the cast not even returning. Great. Speaking of which, we did kind of get an answer as to what happened to Foggy. Now this may still hold true when the show gets released because the article does state that they might end up keeping some footage from the episodes, which implies they may stick loosely to the story already being told, so here's your warning. But basically in episode 1, it's unclear if it's on screen or off screen, but Foggy is revealed to be dead. Which is why Matt decides to stop being Daredevil in the first place, which just... wow. I genuinely cannot believe they would do something like that. I truly hope Eldon Henson did not come back just to die in one episode cause damn, that really sucks. Look, Daredevil is not Daredevil without Foggy or Karen. These main characters are main characters for a reason. They're the heart and soul of the show. They give Matt his humanity. We're just as attached to them as we are to Matt Murdock and from the sounds of what this show was looking like, it looks hardly familiar to be honest. Whenever they hire their new talent and go in new creative directions, that better be fixed or we're rioting. There hasn't been any information as to what happened to Karen, but what we do know is that she simply was not a part of the story either, so maybe she was killed as well. Who knows? Other plot points included Fisk running for mayor to make legislation that bans all vigilantes like Punisher, Spider-Man, and Daredevil. Now that does sound really interesting, so I hope they keep that plot point. The Punisher was also going to be heavily involved because a bunch of corrupt cops were misusing his symbol to mean something else, which would have angered him and brought Punisher back to being a vigilante. Again, another Another great plot point that I really hope gets fleshed out in the next iteration of the series. But great plot points aside, the show sounded like a boring mess that completely paled in comparison to the original. So how do we fix this? Well I see a lot of people saying to simply make Daredevil season 4 and rehire the writers from the previous series but that's probably a little too complicated. There might be some legal issues to make a direct follow up to Daredevil season 3 and at this point a lot of the creative team from the previous seasons have simply moved on. The other reason is also pretty disheartening but Stephen DeKnight, the showrunner of season 1, basically said that rebooting the show like this is Disney's way of not paying residuals to the previous creative team. If they make a direct follow up, then the writers from Netflix will be entitled to receive residuals from the new show. But if it's a reboot and retitled, then they don't have to cop out more money. Pretty stupid, I know, but this is a sad reality. So as much as I would like a Daredevil season 4 with the same creative team, it's just not gonna happen. But honestly, it's fine. We gotta do showrunner every single season of Daredevil anyway, and I think creatively speaking, it'd be neat to have a soft reboot of the show anyway. It just needs to stick to the roots of the old show, but getting a new showrunner and taking things in a new narrative to direction would be preferable to me to be honest. Just please do not hire any more Deck the Halls writers, please. We need experienced writers who have a vision and are going to stick with the series long term. And let executives stay out of the writing process. Writers are writers for a reason and executives are executives for a reason. But I'm still cautiously optimistic, but honestly a lot more optimistic now that this has happened. Yeah, it sucks that we probably won't get Daredevil until like late 2025 at this point, but that's honestly okay. If it means we'll actually get a quality show out of this, then I sincerely hope they take all the time they need to make something truly special. Just find the right people, don't rush productions, bring back the main cast, create a similar tone to Netflix, but also don't be afraid to spice things up a bit without compromising what made it special in the first place. But those are pretty much all my thoughts. What do you guys think? Are you angry that the show has been cancelled? Are you disappointed that you have to wait longer? Or are you kind of a lot more optimistic now about the show like me? Whatever your thoughts are, I'd love to know them in the comments below and if you enjoyed the video, please remember to leave a like and subscribe. Peace.